kick off today's presentation with Adam and Steve. Um, they've been on Open Mind Radio for more than eight years now. There are over 400 audio podcasts of guests from all over the world. The common letter of subjects. This presentation is the wake up process in the favorite belief system. Thank you. Great to see everybody. Probably a few heavy heads this morning. Had a few drinks in the bar last night, so I'm a bit heavy heads. Before we get started, just a couple of things. The people know all the way in, know what I'm like. I'd just like to say a big thanks to the organisers, Trevor and the team. You know, having something like this in Ireland is very rare, where you go to a conference and meet like-minded people and listen to great speakers with great information. So I'd just like to put, ask you to put your hands together and thank you. I got this a few years ago, it was like a swarm on the lake, you know? It looks nice and calm on the top, but it's uh, dead them underneath. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> I just want to get an idea. How many people in the audience here have heard of OAM Radio? Okay, okay. A bit more PR marketing, Steve. A little bit more, I think. A bit, a bit more than uh, That's good stuff. Okay, and obviously I'm Adam, that's Steve. It's a really sad text. Sometimes people get confused. But, um, and um, if you have any questions, if you just keep them to the end of the presentation, that would be great. Yeah. Off, well, we just apologise for our voices in advance. We both have colds. Yeah, we, just, we did the uh, basis conference last year in Dublin, and if you watch it on video, I have a flu. I have a flu there, and for some reason we're doing this, and we have both colds. So just something sinister going on. We don't know what it is yet, you know. So you yeah. wake up in the bar last night? Oh no, we don't have to do with drinking in the bar. No, no, no. <laughs> Double vein. Okay, Steve. <laughs> okay, we kick it off. Right, okay, so we have three days of fantastic and very good information. And um, if, of course, you're awake to this information and you're, you have a fluid belief system, which we'll talk about later, um, and you're willing to open your mind and, and take in the information and question it, very, very important. We're going to be talking about the waking up process and how to approach people with alternative information and their fluid belief system because we've all done it. We've all, you know, we've stepped outside the matrix and we have this information, and then we go up to our friends and family and we go, look at this information, look, fluoride, chemtrails, Wi-Fi, and they think, you're nuts, you're a conspiracy theorist. Okay, so myself and Steve went down this process. We've been doing the radio show eight years, over 400 podcasts, we've interviewed people all over the world, all different subjects, and we did start off with exactly what people do, go up and give them the information and that they're not interested. So we decided to kind of pedal backwards and go, okay, we're do this is wrong. We have to approach this differently to try and wake people up. So we go, we're going to go through the waking process and what we just nicknamed the fluid belief system. And the information that we're going to talk about today is based on our own research and this is what we feel resonates with us at this moment in time. Because our belief system do it, are happy to change. And it's not comprehensive. Um, I'm only scratching the surface because each slide that we go through, you could go down the rabbit hole and spend an hour on that long. Okay, so it, we really have an hour to talk about. So I'm gonna, you know, just you know, um, talk about the basics. Okay, uh, we're gonna just kick off well with the matrix. We assume everyone has heard the term or is familiar with the term the matrix when we say it. Yeah. <coughs> Is your mic loud enough there, Steve? Yeah, one, two. Can you hear Steve okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking back. Yeah, okay, so we're, we're going to talk about the term the matrix. We use that as a kind of a record point. And um, we know, like, everyone who's here, because of the show of hands at the beginning, we're probably previous to the conversion. We're probably very familiar with a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but we're going to be talking about kind of 
the in the matrix and also stepping outside the matrix. And as Adam just uh, touched on as well, when you do come and learn this information and you do go up and you share it with your friends, your families, your loved ones, your work colleagues, etc., uh, you do get a label put on you almost immediately. And uh, anyone who has done this uh, has probably lost friends. I know I have, I personally lost friends and I lost contact with family members for a number of years now. Thanks, thankfully, over the years, my family members and some of my friends have also had their own waking up process. They've had their little, uh, you know, the things that get them going, and they've got to see a little glimmer of what we were what we talked about. They have started to wake up as well. So, so I say that's why we're going to put this together, just to kind of give our overview as to kind of softly, softly approach, instead of kind of going up to someone using the old stash hammer for Okay, so we have all, to different degrees, woken up to what we now know to be controlled and manipulated world dictated by the 1%. I think we can all agree. We have just some level of control that's going on in the world with the elites, and they're controlling everything and they're pushing buttons. And the whole idea of we have free will, well, free will has been taken away from us. I think we are kind of in a, you've probably seen the image, images on Facebook where all the sheep are in the field. So people perceive that we have some level of freedom because we can walk around the field. But around the field is a, a, a hedge, and we can't go beyond that hedge. So with the way things are at the moment in the world, I think most people are, there's a lot more people waking up now. I'll just say that over the eight years that we've been doing the radio show, it's so different now than it was eight years ago. There's more and more people awake and asking questions. Okay. Uh, there's Perception conditions by society. Uh, when we wake up, the, uh, wake up or step outside the matrix and see what's really going on, we, what, what we try to do is start educating the people around us. And what happens, we get frustrated because they're not getting what we push on that. I mean, yeah, that's, good, but that, that, that's a big part of the whole process because, you know, someone may wake up to, let's say, TV license or water meters. Uh, but we can't assume that, you know, because they're waking up to one thing, that they're going to be open to a lot of things. Uh, and that's why like, there is kind of a, a softly, softly, step-by-step -step approach. Well, peeking behind the curtain. The catalyst for peeking behind the curtain might have been 9-11. For others, it might have been personal experiences with the system. Deaths, evictions, unemployment, death of the family. We all have kind of our awakening moment. Um, for me, um, it was 9-11, really, um, that really started it. And a lot of people used to say, is, for other people, it could be a death in the family, or it could be an illness, it could be unemployment. Um, whatever the reason was, there's always a catalyst or a trigger that starts it. And a lot of people say, why don't people wake up? Why don't they see it? Well, we're going to be getting into why they don't see it. But a question that comes up all the time on the radio show is, the difference between harmony versus disharmony. People fundamentally don't like change. They just don't like change. Change is inevitable in a lot of cases, but they don't like change. And if you're in harmony with your life, then why do you want to change? So a lot of the time it takes it some kind of catalyst to trigger, to put you in disharmony, to then start to ask questions. So if we, if we went, to room, went, went, went around the room and asked everybody in the room who woke up to what's going on, compared to going back maybe 10 or 20 years when they were inside the matrix, they would probably say, pinpoint the time that the trigger happened. Okay, and uh, our life does change. Uh, no matter what anyone says, when you get off, your life will change. Um, and the second time, now that the wake-up process has begun, we may start to lose interest in things like TV programs. Well, uh, I can put my hand up to that. Because when I started to wake up to where TV programs that I used to watch, and I realised after a little while that you know I'm just watching this and it's like it's, it's, it's not even reality, but it was kind of way escape from reality. And then I realised reality is much more interesting than what's going on in TV. It does keep you in a subliminal kind of mind control. Yeah, but anyway, you, you may lose may lose interest in things like TV programs, sports, socialising with the same group of people, and you may see less of certain members of the family. Well, talk about socialising. Yeah, as an example, we were. Al and I were at the bar there last week, a few people here today, and we were, we were having a chat with them. And it was, I have to say, by the time we left to go to bed, it, we were, I, I was tired, but I was energised, because we were having a chat with like-minded people. 
And uh, you know, it's, it's great when you can do that because sometimes you find yourself in situations where you're socialising and you're talking about the weather and the sports and you know, all the mundane BS. And you know, you can walk away from one of those conversations feeling like you haven't shared that, you haven't gained that, and great. But when you're with like minded people, there's, there's an energy, there really is an energy. And we felt it here last night. Uh, you, may, you may have a need and a seek for more knowledge. And I'm saying you cannot be with people who just talk BS or are still hardwired into the matrix. Right. A big misconception about the whole idea of waking up is, oh, they're not intelligent. It's all about intelligence. Well, it's not about intelligence. Because if it was about intelligence, then all the academics would be awake. they know what's going on. So, um, how come all these highly qualified academics, professional scientists do not get it and carry on defending the system, which makes us poorer and healthy, dumbed down control? Well, you'll see in one of the slides we mentioned, but a lot of them are paid not to wake up. But well, it's not about intelligence, it's about perception. And we're going to get into that talk about it. Right, it is about perception. Uh, the reason why they don't get it is because it's not about the intelligence or the IQ, it's about perception, as I said. Your upbringing and the influence around my like, friends and family, your media, the media. Uh, if it was about intelligence, then uh, the academics would get it, as you have said. You must be still reading these slides. It's like I've like, like, typed them up. It is. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> anyway, plus their own investment in the system. Years of training and programming, introduction, uh, indoctrination, sorry, garbage in, garbage out. It's very hard to wake someone up when their salary and their funding, etc., depends on them not waking up. And that's, we're, we're hearing a lot of that recent, uh, we hope, the past couple of years, where people are, they're, they're trying to make headway in certain places and certain you know, avenues. And they're being funded, and all of a sudden they're, they, they're kind of told, you better kind of just ease off or you know, tame it down because if not, your funding is going to be removed. And um, we have heard too that certain scientists over the past couple of years have gone missing and been found uh, dead. You know, so, you know, yeah, when people's back is actually into the wall, then, you know, if they, if they go push forward, they may lose the job or they lose the life or whatever. Like, one of the scientists that we spoke to was a chap called Rolf Rigg. I don't know when you know him. He's in his 80s when we interviewed him. And he was designing and building anti-gravitational aircraft in the 50s. And when he, he joined a, a, and got a government contract with a company, um, they gave him a problem to, zo to solve. So within a few weeks, he came back to his boss and said, there you go, I've solved the problem. And, and his boss said, what went to the office? said, no, no, Ralph. We don't want you to find it, we want you to look for it. We don't find it, because if you find it, our funding dries up. So we want you to look for it, but don't find it. This is what happens. Boys? That me? Okay. Okay. <laughs> the control of the matrix. The problem with trying to wake people up is due to the fact that the matrix has its tentacles fairly rooted in any part of society. Education, religion, finance, the judicial system, politics, I think we can all agree on that. Uh, if you only look at each piece in isolation, it's easy for people to say that it's a conspiracy theory because they have no idea of the scale of how the system is controlled and manipulated. And that is the problem. It's a massive jigsaw. And you have to put the pieces together. And a lot of people will see a piece in isolation and think, you know, that's all that is. There is to it. But it's linked to so many more things. Um, and this is where all the research comes into and gone down the rabbit holes to find out all the things. That's what we said before. I mean, if you if you zoom in on something, you know, you, you will perceive it in a certain way. But when you zoom out, you will perceive it possibly in a different way. And then you look at it from different angles. Also, um, down the rabbit hole, uh, we have a, It's not until you start going down the various rabbit holes that you start to see the level of control and the associations between these systems. But to most people, to most people in the matrix, there is no link. Um, we would agree with that. Even if someone tells you there is nothing down a particular rabbit hole, sometimes you have to check it out yourself. And we're just going to say that's kind of your due diligence, because it's very easy if someone says, no point looking over there, nothing to see. You know, you can go, okay, well, I won't look over there. But at some point in time, you go, I should have looked over there, because maybe someone's seen something, and there was nothing to them, but maybe I might have seen something. Uh, anyway, for people who are afforded their path of knowledge, please do not try and force people not to get out of the rabbit hole. Uh, they have to find out for themselves, as we just mentioned, 
And we are all on a path of knowledge. And some people are for the level of all knowledge. And we found that in, in, in all the past eight years. We've interviewed a lot of people. And some of the people are way down the rabbit hole. And we're here and they're over here. And we're talking about something here. And some of the guests have actually said, no, 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 you, no, 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 get up this plea, you need to be here. And, and we're saying to them, well, hang on, we can't just jump over that. We have to go, we have to experience it. And also, you know, um, there's people that will be not as far down the rabbit hole as others, and they can't see the further down the rabbit hole. So they just they just believe that that's the way it is because that's where they are at that time of the knowledge. And it's only until they go further down they look back and go, Ah, I see what you were trying to tell me, but I couldn't see it because I wasn't down that far down the road that far. So. Yeah, just again, it's all about keeping an open mind and challenging your belief system, which we're going to get into. Um, um, but don't stop people, you know, going down the rabbit hole. Let them go down. Even if there's nothing down there, let them go down. But I never wake them up. Oh my God. We all have an auntie, Rose, and an uncle, Pat. And we should never wake them up. You know, they, they're, they're the ones that like EastEnders and Foundation Street. And you talk about the weather, and you talk about the football, and everything else. And you don't wake them up because God, if they woke up, there'd be a nightmare, you know? And um, so the best thing to do is keep them awake. It may be this lifetime they're not ready to be woken up. Maybe the next lifetime then they wake up. But you leave, you know, Auntie Rose and Uncle Pat, and I'll leave them alone. Um, it's uh, in your best interest. <laughs> so as I say, we all know um, the people should be woken up. They would probably be dangerous to themselves and maybe others. So please keep this in mind. The world could fall apart if they realised what they believe is false. It is kind of, you have to be very careful with this information. I know you want to run out and wake everybody up and give me information, but there's some people that you talk, there you go. You just leave. I was like, I mean, last week John Wigan did a very interesting talk on dangers of Wi Fi and all that kind of technology. And when you think about it, if someone, someone who was completely awake still plugged into the matrix had to come into this room last night and sat down and saw John's information, they probably wouldn't without without any danger to themselves. Yeah. Anyway, rise of consciousness, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, one of the things that starts to happen when the penny drops is there's a, a raise in your own consciousness. Uh, we may lose interest in the things we previously enjoyed, as we mentioned at the beginning. Our circle of friends may change, uh, we may not see certain people as often, we may not have a lot in common, because we're starting to vibrate right on a higher consciousness frequency. Uh, relationships can also suffer. This is a major issue. We've heard about this time and time again. Uh, where people, you know, one, one of the people in the relationship will start to wake up and, you know, albeit very slowly, very quickly, and they, they will share the information with their partner. And some people have gone, uh, you know, no, suppose I'm, I'm lucky in the sense my wife's in the audience, uh, because, you know, she's interested in, in this sort of thing. It was only when, when I started to, to delve into it. Uh, she was right by my side, she supported me the whole way, and hence she's here today. Uh, okay, okay, this is up the show of hands. Has anyone else experienced this happening in your life? Friends and family, just gone apart, losing interest. You know, it happens to all of us, you know, and you think you're completely confused, you don't get it. Okay, your perception has changed. This is because your perception of life and what is happening in the world has changed. You've put on the shades and you can now see a side matrix. This is a clip from the movie, uh, They Live. Have you all seen that movie? Right, so he puts on the shades and all of a sudden you can see what's going on. You can see the real life rather than the uh, fictitious life which the system is showing them. And um, this is what happens. And it's amazing when the penny drops because you start to have this hunger for knowledge. And you're looking up stuff all the time and you know, I am anyway, I'm always on the uh, YouTube looking at stuff and listening to different speakers and getting different guests on the show. Um, and it's, it's very interesting, but it's very time consuming. And I'll just say to you that, give yourself a break. Because you can, you know, it can affect you. If you keep doing it 24 seven, are you really, you know. It's like drugs, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it gets addictive, doesn't yeah. it? It gets addictive. So, you know, go off and do the washing and the ironing or the shopping or whatever, and just get away from it. Because it can be too much. You know, you have to have a break away from it. Yeah. Okay, I love this one. He's not listening. Yeah, so anyway, we stepped outside the matrix. We want to tell the world of all this information that we know. Uh, we don't have the la la la, headphones on, 
the model would be saying there are conspiracy theories. Uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, we've, we've probably all come across people like that. And all I have, as I said, was certain members of my family. And um, when I started sharing the information, it was I got the raised eyebrows, and it was, are you all right? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, you just you, you sound a little bit nutty. And uh, that was my sister. My sister actually said that to me. And this went on for a while, and I said, oh, what? Look at this information, and it was kind of. Why not, and as you said about people being complacent, why don't I want to look at this information? I'm happy. Why, why do I want to look at this? That looks like something that would make me maybe sad or angry. Why not if it's okay? So she wouldn't look at it. And the years went on, a couple of years went on, and eventually she had her own little issue. And she came back to me, and I remember, I actually remember the day she came back to the, can I have a word you? And I said, of course you can, yeah. Because up to that point, it was a case of like, like go, we go visit and we talk about the, the weather and the family and the usual. Um, we well, didn't really touch on anything uh, major, but she asked me one day, can I have a chat? I says, yeah. I says, I want to apologise to you. How do you mean? I need to get the flowers. Apologise for what? I said, because a couple of years ago I told you you were a tinfoil wearing a conspiracy theory nut job. Um, and she says, uh, I'm starting to hear from whole circle of friends and people with nut job about uh, stuff that's going on in the world. And she said to me, I want to apologise. She was actually starting to wake up. That's Mm. Yeah, I'm only saying on the, the radio show all right, you know? Okay. <laughs> on a side note, there you go. I hope you have all your tinfoil with you today. Uh, if you want to call us conspiracy theorists, that's fine. It means we are actually questioning what we are being told rather than being ignorant and accepting the mainstream program. There's a definition in the dictionary of ignorant being a lack of knowledge. Um, and that's the way I see it. It's a lack of knowledge. Um, but they will still give their opinion, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it just if somebody calls a conspiracy theorist, so I just said, well, if, if you think, if you call me a conspiracy theorist in the fact that I question what we're being told by the government, yeah, then fair enough, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Okay. At this stage in the presentation, we hope, we hope people are thinking, well, guys, how can we open people's minds? The word not against yeah. Uh, not in the manner that's suggested by the picture. I'll be with a Chevy around like that. Can I just add that picture from the oh, just for a minute? There you go. You know, when we talk about, you know, open your mind and have to feel a belief system, you always get somebody that says, Oh, you don't want to have a too open where your brain falls out. <laughs> like, yeah, we get it. We know. It's all about being um, asking questions and getting the facts. That's really what it is. Right. Now, we, we myself and Steve put this together. We call it the food belief system. And the reason why we call that is because if everybody remembers the picture of Bruce Lee when he was interviewed, and he was talking about the martial arts, and he says you have to be like water. Because he said a lot of the martial arts styles are out there are very rigid and stiff and you know and he said if you're on a street fight you have to be fluid. And of course we got thinking, well surely your belief system has to be the same. So this is where so we call it the fluid belief system because it just makes sense calling it that. And I'm not saying that, you know, this is unique. You know, somebody else has probably done this and called it something else. But this is this was the start of an Aristotle's quote. And this is where the argument is for everybody. If you're going to be talking to somebody and you want to give them information, this is where it starts, the food belief system. The mark of an educated mind is to be able to entertain the thought with etc. That means you're open minded. And too many people are black and white, and not on top of it, <coughs> and they close down. There's a grey area there, and that's the entertainment. Steve. Yep, there is. Uh, we all know that there, there's, there's, there is a lot of grey. There is, and it has to be there. <coughs> everything cannot just be black. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to believe everything, uh, but before you dismiss anything, you need to entertain, request facts, and not opinions, because everyone is full of opinions. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've all probably heard the saying, you know, ah, it's, it's a bit of a grey area. Well, that's good, it's good to have a grey area, because everything is not put in right. Before, well, hopefully, everything is not just put in right. There, there are areas where we can question things. Um, oh yeah, opinions are not facts. And boy, there's a lot of people out there who have their opinion, don't they? They love giving their opinion. No facts, but they give you their opinion. Um, and opinions are not facts, that's it. People love to give their opinion if they have done no research because, for most people, not knowing something is a weakness. And we're going to get into the psychology of how the mind works. Because a lot of people perceive not knowing something as a weakness, so they cover up 
I'm going to talk about that. And then when you, hopefully after the conference is finished and you go back and you're going to be speaking to friends and family and people, you'll take this information with you and then apply it and see how you get on. But we, we get into it. Okay, two ways to answer. When you give someone information that may be a little bit out there, uh, for them, i.e., do you believe that the world is controlled by an elite group of people? They will generally answer in one of two ways. Right, okay, gauging somebody's perception. Well, the image says, says itself six or nine. The person who says that they do not know enough about the actual uh, subject matter are comfortable with their intellect and not afraid to say, I don't know. So, if you go up to somebody and go, do you believe there's a group of elite people running the world? And they go, you know, I don't know an awful lot about that, so I can't really comment. They don't, they're not afraid to show the weakness that you don't know because it means that they're confident with their intellect. Where when you get a person who says, oh that's a load of BS, it's not, um, it's not comfortable with their intellect, so it describes it with a throwaway comment. I've come across this, and unfortunately it is a fact, now it's a generalisation, but it is a fact that people perceive not knowing something as a weakness. So that they don't want to be seen that they don't know something, so they'll cover it up. So, if this happens, that's when you can start asking about, well, obviously, you know, if you think it's BS, you must have done a lot of research on it. Can you show me your research? And that's when you go, that's it. Because generally, they don't have any research done. I'll actually, I'll just to Alan there a couple of nights back. Why don't this some walk and why that? Suggest anyone else do it. Just get a piece of paper with a work colleague or a love or whoever, and write, write a six on it, and then put it on the table and go, what's that? And generally, because they're going to be looking up from their angle, they're going to go, it's annoying. And you go, no, it's a six. They go, no, oh, it's annoying. And then you, you, you turn it around and they go, oh yeah. And that's when you can say, right, you see, you, you can only look at that from your perspective and your point of view, but when you look at it from another person's perspective, it's completely different. People out there who tell you they have an open mind, but as soon as you challenge their belief system, they close down. Right? Lala just said, we all know people who are like that. You ask them something and you, you get, it, you get it, an answer in one of two ways. Long as you're a Okay, challenging their belief. If you know this, the information that you give them is irrelevant. The issue here is that you have challenged their belief system, and if they close down, then the societal programming has worked they will not entertain your information. Basically, we all have a belief system. And even people who say, I don't have a belief system, have a belief system, because that's the belief system, right? So, but we all have a belief system, and some of our belief system is fluid, and there's other parts of our belief system which is, it's set in stone, and you won't move from there. Now, if you all question what you believe and the part that you're set in stone, and say, why am I so locked into this that I won't challenge it? Because it's only when you start challenging what you believe that you start learning and growing and educating yourself. So we all have to challenge our whole belief system and how we believe. Because something could happen in the world tomorrow, for example, that, let's say, I don't know, loads of VT crafts start flying for people who don't believe in it. And all of a sudden you see loads of VT crafts. That would blow people's minds who are stuck in the belief system who think we're the only people on the planet and there's no other life anywhere else. So this is why it's always good to have a fluid belief system because what I know today, I know. Tomorrow I might know something different that might contradict what I know today, but I'll just change. So there's no surprises. And it means that I'm constantly learning and growing rather than being stuck in it. So the exercise for everybody today is to ask yourself, what belief system am I stuck in? What am I not prepared to move? And then have a think about that. And if you go to somebody and say, have you got an open mind? And they're going, yeah, I have an open mind. And then you challenge their belief system and you shut down. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter whether the moon is made of cheese, right? It's not about the content. You don't argue about the content because you can spend hours doing that and you probably won't get anywhere. You can find out about how they, whether they have an open mind or not. You know, and that's really what it's all about, because you get to the psychology of how the wine works, not the content. And this is the mistake that we were making at the start. We were trying to force this information on them and give them the information, where we should have been looking at the psychology of how their mind works and said, actually, are you open-minded? 
Are you prepared to challenge your belief system? That's where we kind of make the change. And then we notice that by applying that, then people start going, oh, okay, okay, I thought it was open minded, but I'm not. And then it started, the pain starts on. Please. On the topic again, I think we all know about propaganda. Uh, chances are, we come up with some information that they hear, people come up with information that they hear in the media, or by someone down the phone, we all know someone down the phone who loves giving out voice. Uh, would you disagree with the information that you've given them? And, yeah, as, as you said, we, 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 we know people like that. They're, they're in our, our, our circle of friends, they're in our communities. And uh, as soon as you, know, you, you mention a subject or a topic, they will grab it. It's like you're playing ball with them, they'll grab it and they'll roll with the ball. And you won't get it back because all of a sudden they're, they're, they're so opinionated, so believe them. And they, you know, they just won't let go. It's, it's one of these, it's my way or the way. Okay, facts versus opinion. So at this point, we would be asking, is that your opinion or is that a fact? If they say it's my opinion, we would say thanks, but I'm not interested in your opinion. If they say it's a fact, we would ask them to produce the evidence. As we have a stack of research to disagree with what they say, this is where their argument falls apart as they never have any research done. It's up to you how you play it. You know, myself and Steve have been awake since 2001. So, 17 years and 8 years doing the radio show. So, we have kind of a stack of good evidence with all the experts that we've had on the show. So, when somebody says to us that, um, yeah, Wi Fi, yeah, that's safe. There's nothing wrong with Wi Fi. And um, we have Seth Murray, Holly Johansson, and John Regal, and so many other people we've had on the show, Barry Trower, talking about the dangers of Wi Fi. Then I would say, well, if you think it's not safe, have you done research on it? And they'll say, well, no, I haven't done any research. And go, well, so that's your opinion. And they go, well, yeah, that's my opinion. I'll, then I'll say, well, sorry, but I don't want your opinion. I want your research. Because I've done all the work and I've done all the research. You know, here it is. So how can you say that Wi Fi is dangerous if you haven't done any research? Oh, I watched the program on RTE1. Right? Okay. Fair enough. And obviously, that, when, 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 when it gets to that situation, that's normally where they stand with the insults. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they, they think that you're making a competition now, like you're better than like, you know what? But you're not. Why are you yeah. trying to educate? The problem is, is that, you know, some people might get upset because you're catching them out because you have the facts and they don't. And you might get a bit, you know, itchy about them. But the, tr the thing is, remember that you have done the research. You will lose out friends and family. You're going to lose out with them. You know, you're going to fall in with them. Because you've done all the research and you know you're right. But you know, people being people, they like their opinion, but they don't do the research. Because it takes time and energy to put in time to do the research. <laughs> yeah. You all the uh, politicians up there, but we're uh, on the camera, so we uh, <laughs> decided not to. Opinions are like, I'm not going to read it out, oh, everyone has one. If you were the facts, the stronger the opinion. Now, the lack of evidence or facts has never stopped anyone giving their opinion. And good people will be hoping that. Was obviously, that slide, a lovely slide. Um, and that was like, yeah, he was going to put up a few politicians' pictures up there, but there's so many to shoot from. Um, but yeah, opinions are like, yeah, everyone, everyone does have them, and most people are not afraid to give them. Okay, ask questions. This is the thing. Where we try to push the information on people, go, look, this is the information. We took a step back and then started asking questions. So they would come out with their opinion, and they need to ask questions about their opinion. And that's again where the argument falls apart. If you're going to try to wake somebody up, ask questions. What you need to do is find out what upsets them, and give them information on that level. Find out what they are not happy about, i.e. TV license, water meters, um, property charge, justice system, fines, etc. Speak about them, speak to them about this. Avoid going into any high level information like ETs, backyard, <coughs> globality, and otherwise they will not be interested. When people wake up, it's brutal. But the catalyst for waking up might be the water meters, it might be the smart meters, it might be um, the TV license, whatever it is. Just because they woke up doesn't mean they're ready to talk about the big stuff because you'll blow their mind. So what you need to do, especially for people who are still in the matrix, but even the people who have woken up, give them the information that they're researching and they're not happy about. If they're not happy about TV licenses, Give them information about that, or the or makers, or wife, wife, or whatever. Start there. Don't give them the, the big stuff, because I know there's a lot of people in the audience that are way, way, way down the road, and you're, you're looking at the big stuff that's going on, and that's great. 
But for new people waking up, it's too much for them. Okay, so you have to, baby steps, gently, you know, the fluoride is poison and all that kind of stuff. But find out what upsets them and give them the information based on that. And that's a good way to get them to move down the road. Well, we say it's like planting seeds. You know, you don't have to, you don't plant, have to plant a whole lot of seeds all at one time. You can plant them one at a time. It's, you know, it's, it's that simple. Anyway, on to the fluid belief system. Uh, we only know today what we know today, as I mentioned earlier. Tomorrow, new information may come to disagree with what we believe is true today. So you need to keep the old belief system fluid about everything. Uh, by doing this, you won't have, or you shouldn't have, any shocks as you're open to change. And this also helps in your growth and knowledge. Uh, you can't argue with that. No, yeah, it does. You, you, you need to be just so resilient. It's like children. I mean, we all, I'm sure a lot of us here have children, or probably most of us have been children. Some of us probably still are. Uh, but, you know, when you have a child, uh, it's actually Mick. Uh, Mick was just saying the same thing there last night. When you have a child, uh, we lie to our children. We don't want to lie to our children, but we do. You know, Santa Claus, two fairy. You know, etc. And then when, when a child gets to a certain age, we then go, that's not real. You know, so that, so we're we're the ones who from an early age are giving their children, we're building on their belief system. And then it's like <coughs> midway through or a portion away, we're yanking the, the carpet from underneath the feet. And like, that's not fair either. But then what do you do? I mean, in, in the alloyage of Christmas and Santa Claus, you know, what do you do? Because it's so ingrained in us as a society that we, we just continue on the lives. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And that's why if the, if the peace stop you and ask for your date of birth, you can always say, I don't know. And they say, what do you mean you don't know? They say, well, my, my mother and father were, you know, lawyers. He said, what do you mean? He said, uh, well, you told me about the two fairly in Santa Claus, so I can trust them. So I can't believe in the date of birth. Of course, you were too young to remember. Exactly. I was there, but, you know, not intelligent enough to remember. And um, right, two police systems. People with two police systems never argue. Can anyone tell us why? If we had a table full of people that have a fluid belief system, there'll be no arguments. The reason why is because the mind is open. You know, if somebody challenges their belief system, you go, well, that's interesting, I'll entertain that. If you're on a table of open-minded people and somebody starts arguing, then chances are their belief system has been challenged and they're defending it. And the whole idea is to be open with them. So, and that's the difference now. We're definitely saying about being with a group of people with open-minded conversation. And it's a mind blow where you can sit down and talk about any subject and everybody entertains it. It's brilliant. It's just so refreshing. You don't get into these poor arguments and everything else, you know? I was going to say, yeah, that's when we opened it, Maureen and, and, and Scott. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a fantastic group of people. And then everyone was just, the, the conversation flowed. It was the quickest couple of hours of my life, I mean, where everyone was so receptive. There was no Ah, uh, no, I think you're wrong there. You know, so if somebody wanted to say something, disagree, they disagree in a constructive way. And of course, children argue, adults talk. This is the giveaway that we've got to get into this. <laughs> okay, this is a. Um, we, we put an animal stain on this, but I'm sure somebody else has come up with this. But as we said, it's not what you believe, but how you believe. So. Forget about the content. It's your having an open, open mind, having a fluid belief system. So it's the way you believe, not what you believe. Okay, the content is irrelevant. Yeah, and someone, a wise man once said to me as well about life, he said, it's not, what, it's not where you live, it's how you live. And you know, everyone will sort of talk about different areas, it's a, it's a bad area and all that, but it's how you live, it's not where you live. And obviously, in your, mind, in, 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 you know, your life and your mind as well, it's not what it is, it's not what you believe, it's how you believe. Okay, the teenage mind. Uh, okay, you want to go? Right, so we can both. Yeah, so anyway, the teenage mind versus the adult mind. Uh, you can see the, the, the teenage mind on the left with all, the, all that's going on. The uh, majority of people on the planet have a teenage mind, which is the ego and the ignorance. The adult mind is hopefully wisdom and humility. Um, we are, we're all on the journey. How do we get there? <laughs> We're all on a journey. Some people may go in a direct route, some people may go the scenic route, but the end goal is always the same for most people, hopefully. Uh, when we're all on this level of humanity, humanity will have reached its destination. Hopefully. Yeah, basically, the teenage one and adult one, that's why we have laws. Because we have loads of people who have a teenage one. And they need the nanny state to tell them, no, you're not to do that. It's like having teenagers. I have a son, 
uh, uh, Steve has a teenage daughter as well. And you have to get rules and ground rules in the house, otherwise they'll abuse them. And so there's a lot of adults. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're 18 or 18, you can have an 18 year old with an adult mind and an 80 year old with a teenage mind. And I have an 80 year old auntie who has a teenage mind. It's phenomenal. She's like a child. It's unbelievable. Um, but we get more into that. Right, the teenage mind. The teenage mind is what about me? Hey, Danny State, what are you going to do for me? It's not my fault. It's your fault. I want what I want. I want. If you have teenage kids, you'll be familiar with this state of mind. It's just, it's part of growing up as a teenager. But sometimes in, in adulthood, we don't get over it. We stay in that teenage mind. Okay, and the other one. Uh, the other one, on the other hand, takes responsibility for their actions, i.e. I mean, hard loss and injury, I'm sure we're familiar. I'm <coughs> wrong, probably true. The, the drinking and driving is the nanny state. That is said, yeah. There are laws in place how you should not drink and drive. You know, I mean, the fact that we have to be told that we shouldn't do that, I mean, what does that say about us as, as, as a human? Uh, common sense should tell us that. Common sense tells me that, that if I'm going to put something into my body that's going to impair my ability to drive or whatever, and uh, you know, I, I could harm or worse kill someone by my actions, then, you know, that's, that's something that's it built into us. And I think we, we, don't, we all know. Uh, but unless there's laws, then you know, it's like a free for all uh, in some situations. Uh, but yeah, you know, we, we need to. It's okay to, to have a, a teenage mind. You know, no one's saying that you, when you reach a certain age, you must put your toys away. No, you can still have a, have fun and have a teenage mind. But you, you know, you have to be able to kind of differentiate between when when it's okay to be like that and when it's okay to, you know, you have to be an adult. It's about being responsible. I had a heavy debate with a girl over this. Um, and I was saying to her, well, if you were an adult, as an adult, what we, you would do is um, you'd say, okay, I'm going to drink tonight, so I'm going to either leave the car at home, get a taxi, or I'll bring the car, leave it there, and I'll pick it up in the morning. That's, kind of, that's the adult thing to do. The teenage mind is, well, I'm going to drive there, and I'll have five or six points, and yeah, I'm okay, I actually drive better with six points, you know, and I won't get caught by the cops, it could be okay. That's the teenage mind, and that's why we need the man to stay. Because these people are incapable of taking incapable of taking responsibility for themselves. And the lady I got into a debate over, she said, Oh, but you need that law, otherwise everybody will be doing it. And she completely missed the point that, well, if you're actually responsible and have an adult mind, you wouldn't do it. Regardless of the law, you just don't do it. And that's the difference. So humanity. We all have to move into the adult mind and move away from the teenage mind for us to grow and expand and, and uh, improve as a, as a society and as a, um, a, a, as a species. Well, it's going to take a long time. Uh, things to remember. So, three things that we want you to take away from the presentation today. We all have to move from the teenage mind to the adult mind, move away from ego and ignorance and move towards community and wisdom. By having a fluid belief system means that you are going to be more receptive to information and your knowledge will grow. If you're going to give your opinion, tell people it's your opinion. Don't be afraid to say, look, I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm not sure whether it's right, but I'm going to give you my opinion um, because I did read something on it, but I don't have any hard facts to give you. And just be honest, you know, it's the best way to be. And if you're dealing with anybody else in the, in the alternative movement, and you're talking about subject matters, it's all about just keeping an open mind. And don't be afraid to ask. You know, somebody says about you know, some subject that you're interested in, say, look, can you email me that link, or can you send me that information? I'm very interested in it. You know, and, and that's really what it's all about. Yeah, as well, I mean, we, we find this too, well, no, I find this too. Sometimes you, you're, you're discussing something with someone, and they'll say something to you, or you'll say something to them, you know about such and such, and they'll not. Yeah, when you know in reality, they don't know about it. But, you know, it's, and, and it's okay, a lot of times it's okay when someone says to you, you know, I know about this, and it's okay to know about this, but actually no, I don't know about that. Yeah, don't I don't know. know. Again, some people see not knowing something as a weakness. Don't, don't be one of them. Just say, I don't know. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Right, okay, very quickly, I've been asked to have to talk about this. Myself and Steve have looked at kind of the journey of the process of waking up. And we just see it as three steps. We see it as the matrix, you become aware of what's going on in the world, 
and then you become self-aware. A lot of people get into the spiritual side and realise that we're all energy and we're here for a, a human experience. Um, and some people go down the spiritual route and go into healing and all that kind of stuff, which is great. But sometimes what happens is some people jump from the matrix and they become self-aware and they don't know about the awareness of the world and what's going on. But what happens is they realise that negative energy is bad for you. And anything that's negative is bad for you. So I don't want to look at that, I don't want to see that. Da, 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 da. But the trouble is, is that by ignoring all that negative stuff, like pedophilia and all that kind of stuff, what's happening is you're letting the people get away with it. You're letting the top people get away with it. So, and plus the fact that there are energies out there, you know, yin and yang, you know, good and bad, there are positive energies and the negative energies. I've been psychically attacked, I know what it feels like, and it's not nice. A lot of people have been attacked. There are negative energies out there. And they do attack people, especially when your energy is down. We talk about this time and time again. Drugs, alcohol, anything that breaks down your energy, energy vibration gives an opportunity of a negative energy, energy to jump in. And we've come across people where we said, you know what, they're not the people that we knew. There's a certain individual in the uh, that we, we, we now don't actually talk to on the alternative media side, which we've known for years. And this person is a completely different person. It's as if a walk-in has come in and taken her over. It's just a two completely different person. And three of us decided that's not the same person and we walked away. So it does happen. So what I'm saying to you is, get to know your enemy. You have to know how to protect yourself spiritually because of the negative energies, because they, they, they will pray you. Um, I don't know whether any of you heard the interview we actually did with Katrin uh, Kavungu, where she is a regression hypnotherapist, I went to see Katrin And her experience of this waking up process was uh, 16 demonic beings around her head. And to say that she was crapping herself is an understatement. And, um, and she sorted it out. But she learned a very, very valuable lesson about negative energy. So it's not just the physical. Steve, you have a great analogy in regarding the frequencies, the frequencies that we see with our eyes is limited. We think what we see is all that there is, but there isn't. We know the frequencies out there. Do we know the example, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure everyone's probably going to say you haven't looked into it. Next time you're sitting on your chain with the channels on the TV, uh, like, there's obviously something that goes from the remote control to the TV, but you can't see it. But if you have a, a camera on your cell phone, just uh, pick up the, the cell phone, stick on the camera, and then point the remote control on it, and you can actually see it. It's a, it's, yeah, you can flicker, yeah. It's flicker. So you know it's there. Infrared is there. But air eyesight, we have limited perception of frequency, so we don't see the infrared. But we know it's there because the channel's changing. So there's things out there that are outside their perception of frequency that are going on that we're not seeing. That's what John was saying last night, John Wigan. Uh, he had the graphic up here in relation to the likes of Wi-Fi and 4G and 5G, etc. Uh, we can't see it, but if this, I don't actually I don't have a phone with me, but if, I don't know if this Wi-Fi is real at the moment, but if you could see it with your eyes, we would be appalled. So, uh, so as we say, keep an open mind. Everyone have a great day. It's great to see everybody here. Great to see so many open minds. Um, we are Alan and Steve from Open Your Mind Radio. We need a big favour from everybody. Please promote alternative radio. Please put it out there and let people know what they're not just OAN oh, yeah, radio. You have big from Nippy Sound who's here as well. And you have people's internet radio. We've been doing it a long time and interviewing a lot of guests. And some people still don't know that all media is there. And we're interviewing a lot of, a lot of speakers that are sitting in the audience um, uh, now and all through yesterday and today. A lot of them have been on OAN oh, radio. And we do podcasts, we, we broadcast live every Sunday, every week. We've been doing it for eight years, over eight years. And all the podcasts are available. So you can pick the subject that you want and then go and listen to it. And it could be, you know, if you're into, um, say, vaccines. A couple of weeks ago, we had Dr. Raymond Lebeau on. She's a medical doctor for 44 years, an expert in our field, talked all about the dangers of vaccines. Brilliant information. So. We're all out there, it's just we need more promotion, we need to let people know that all people is there, it's alive and well, and let people know, <coughs> and uh, that would be great. So, a big thank you for coming today, and this is Joe Scandal.
if there's something that you want to ask us that you want to do in private, just give the show after. <laughs> Nick. Nick. Oh, I have a question for you. No, not Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Like you said, we're not this a long time. I just want to ask you something. You know, with all the personal sacrifices that you have to make, do you have any regrets doing what you're doing? You know, if, if you like to turn the clock back and yeah, you not do it. If, if you if you actually see the Matrix, the movie, the guy that's sitting in the restaurant going, I want to get, I want to get back to the Matrix, because all of us here who are awake are taking the pain by everybody else who's not awake, because we are realizing what's going on in the world and how. There's an elite trying to take us out in all so many different ways. And we're taking that pain out. But there is karma. There is karma at the end of the tunnel. But there are times that, I, I don't know about you, Steve, have you ever thought, I've, I've thought about it, but, you know, about, it's impossible. Once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. Right? It's impossible. Well, my only regret, mate, is that I didn't, my only regret is that I didn't start to learn this sooner. Same Much sooner, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but everybody has the time. There's some people that wake up to it in their seventies, some people wake up to it in their teenage years or in their twenties. I have a, a letter, actually Trevor just gave me a letter from a chap who's seventeen and he sent the letter here to the conference and he was saying he listens to the show and he wants to give us some information. And he's seventeen. I would have loved him to probably know that this is seventeen. But yeah, it, it, it's it's a hard cross to bear because we know the truth, and when you see the lies that you're told constantly by our politicians and everything else, it's you know it does tug on the heartstrings. But all we can do is study, try and educate, wake people up. Because the more that people wake up, the more we can shut down the system and stop it. Yeah, Nick. Um, I think when you go to doctors, you know, it's, it's huge. Buying personal for six this year, and I just, I cannot get over the health system. It's just crazy. Um, but it's just crazy. And after having cancer, then they want to get the vaccine. It's a little gap. It's that like, Why won't you have it? It's like being bombarded, and it's dreadful. Yeah, yeah. The just in case you didn't hear that, the lady said to the doctors, "Why, you know, why would they want to wake up?" Because I used to work in the pharmaceutical industry when I lived in London, and it's it's all about money. The corporate world is all about money. It's all about the bottom line, right? Um, and so the the more symptoms they can dream up, they say, "Right, we're going to have a symptom like ADHD, and then we're going to have a product called Ritalin, and we're going to give it to the kids." So there's a problem, there's a solution, it's going to be a drug, it's going to make money on it, right? It's all about the bottom line. And this is why you have great speakers like Jane the Bowen <coughs> telling you she experienced or experienced with cancer. And um, I have to say, Brenda, for you, you said you were, last night you did your talk at 64, you look fantastic at 64. Uh, <laughs> Way. We need to understand what to do in the foods, the GMOs, and start learning about our own health and get educated. We have the great people here. I don't know whether Richard is Richard Richard Cumbers in the audience. We do a thing called paging. Now I know Richard's not doing the talk at the conference, but what we do is we say we say put your money where you know this. And Richard did, and um, he's a product uh, the voice called paging, and um, Richard came on the show and we said, well, prove it. So Richard drove up from Kent there and he treated Steve, myself, and Steve's wife. Within 10 minutes, the pain was gone. And we were so convinced because of the pain that we actually got pain genie and we did the training with Richard. And I've been treating people with pain genie, so has Steve. And we have interviews with people we've actually treated. This is not a product club, by the way. This is you taking control of your own sickness or your own pain. You know, I try to avoid going to the doctor. I haven't seen my doctor in a long time, and I don't really want to go. It, the, the, the issue is with doctors, they'll always treat the symptom, they'll never treat the cause, because it's not in their interest to treat the cause. They'll only give you a treat the symptom, which is probably going to be a talent. So it's up to you to do the research, listen to shows like we do, like and have people like Richard on and Bernard on, and listen to what they're saying. Because there's a lot of truth in what they're saying. I mean, they've studied it, they've researched it, they're doing it. 
And uh, because doctors will only push tablets, because most doctors, they do, I think, one day of homeopathy, you know, experience with homeopathy, and the rest is all the drugs. Because the medical colleges are sponsored by the pharmaceutical industry, so close first. Hmm? I just want to I'd like to give a story. Uh, two weeks ago, I lost my brother through cancer. Uh, it would be fair as well. And um, I remember I had some time, um, the, the book of choices that I want me to give to. We sit down and uh, do something, do all these things in this book. But um, when he went to get his chemo, um, he had made up his mind, he was going to put on this road to turn to our spot. And he went, he was in my house and he left with the intention of saying, no, I'm not having a dream. Because we're going to give him a cocktail in combat therapy. So when he went and told his doctor this, he said to him, eh, well, why are you not going to have this? So my brother says to him, um, you know, my wife died of cancer. And after she had this cocktail, he came up, she was feeling very ill. She was never going to have it. So the night before I'd been talking to he said, try and convince him to make sure he doesn't take this chemo. Because he said, whatever time he has left, he said, I mean, hopefully, he said, if he's on this other road, he might be okay. So he said to the doctor what he wants to take. So the doctor actually thanked me, because he said to him, well, if you don't take the plan, he said, we can give you less than three months. If you take it, we can give you eight, eight to twelve months. So he said, take your family. So he did. And he decided, well, if he doesn't get more time to tell me, I'll take it. So he took it. So I brother him said that in three months after taking it, so if you had to follow it, he'd still have had to treat good ones. Or it might have got better to come down the line forever at all. But he was told, you know, you're all sick, your family's sick, take it. So I think they put a lot of pressure on cancer patients. Yeah, they do, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I should say very quickly, yeah, they do. And uh, I mean, I've been to doctors several times as well. And uh, they do <coughs> offer you the worst case scenario. It's, it's, it's normally a case of, well, you can get, you can get the only alternative roads, you can do that all day long, however. This is tried and trusted, and this is tested, and this is what we suggest. And if you if you go down that road, all oh, bad things will happen. You know, and it, it's always they like legalised drug culture. That's what we always say, anyway. Yeah, seventy-five percent of doctors don't recommend chemo, and they wouldn't recommend chemo to their own kids and their family. That's seventy-five percent. So if they don't recommend it to their own family, why do you recommend it to you? Maybe there's money involved. And the one thing I also want to leave you with, and this is very important, and we came across it. There's a, a chap that was called Bob Beck. And Bob Beck was a physicist, and he developed the Bob Beck Protocol. And the story goes that um, he could actually cure cancer. So he asked this engineer, he was in his 50s, he had cancer. And the engineer left work, and he was at home, and his wife and his daughter was taking care of him. He okay, Dad, I'm going to Dad, and all this. And Bob Beck said, well, look, why don't you come and sit in my machine and see if we can cure your cancer? So he said, ah, sure, why not? We'll give it a go. So he sat, sat in the machine. And lo and behold, after all the treatment that Bob Beck did, the cancer was gone. And then the, 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 the chap said, God, I'm in my 50s. I now have to go back out to work and compete with the young guys um, because I didn't think that would work. And he ended up committing suicide. Right? The reason being, the, story, the moral of the story is, don't assume that everybody that you come across wants to be healed. There are people, and you see them on Facebook, oh, I have my leg and I have this. They love the sympathy, and they'll enjoy that more than actually being cured. All right. So don't assume that if you have the golden ticket or you have something that will help them, that you'll give it to them. They'll find a problem for every solution because they're not interested in healing it because they have no attention on their illness. So that's something to keep in mind. We come across that as well. Okay. But um, so I hope you have a great day. Great speakers on for the rest of the day. Hopefully. <laughs> The man on the back. Just Sorry, just before Richard gets the mic, I just want to say in relation to Richard and the pain genie, um, we did ask Richard to put his money where his mouth was. I had a frozen shoulder, speaking of doctors, I had a frozen shoulder, uh, I had very limited movement, went to the doctor, uh, all he wanted to do was painkillers, painkillers, and there you go, and uh, eventually some physiotherapy. Went to the physiotherapist, they gave me some gentle movements, you know, exercises, they were rotational exercises, it made no difference. Richard came down 
and Richard gave me one 15 minute treatment for KG. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, this is not going to work. It's like a TENS machine or something, but it's not a TENS machine. The science is far much more than a TENS machine. Uh, and after 10, 10, 15 minute treatment, full movement was back. I always belong away. Just so, so you know, if people are here to paying you today, like, do a little bit of research on it. Don't just put it, like, don't, don't dismiss it. It's a very powerful voice. Well, thanks, man, Steve. I'll, I'll pay you later. Sponsored by the just, just a quick one about perception, because uh, about 15 years ago I was not wondering how to get uh, information to pregnant women and children, etc. about vaccinations. And so I was in a shopping mall and uh, they had one of these machines where you can make your own business cards up. So I thought, I know what to do. I'll put I'll make a business card up and I put, are vaccines safe? Please check. It's much easier to sort it out before it was a problem. And I put a website called www.vactruth.com. So I have all these cards. And just walked out of the machine, and I saw a woman there who was pregnant. So I walked up to her and said, please take this card, you might want to check this out. And uh, I said, I don't actually, you know, that's my own children, please check it out. She immediately said, are you a doctor? And I said, no. She said, well, what do you know? And she walked off. And I thought, that didn't work too well. So next time I saw a pregnant woman, I walked up to her and I said, my medical doctor gave you this card. He doesn't vaccinate his children. I'm sure you're pregnant. Have it in my pocket. Please just take this. Straight away, she took it. And I think the, 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 the thing is, is trying to get it in with these people to get something into their belief system that they can actually accept because everyone's been programmed to believe that the guy in the white coat has all the answers. So even if you're slightly economical with the truth, and there are many, many doctors who don't vaccinate their children, as you know, I think that's the trick of the way to, to actually find their Achilles heel and give them something that they can actually then readily accept and check something out. Exactly, I totally agree. And it's important, and it's amazing that even when people have cancer and certain diseases that could be life threatening, you give them the information to say, look, you've got to do is try this, and they still don't try it. You know, and I always want to say, well, they're also not desperate enough, because if you're desperate enough, you'll try it on. So, any more questions? Stand up here and take responsibility for my oh, oh, oh sorry, completely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm bound by um, a code of professional ethics, and I'm affiliated to, um, I suppose, a system that often compromises my own personal, um, I suppose, my value system, my ethical system. Um, and my moral compass. Um, and I suppose speaking, you know, with doctors, nurses, etc., we are affiliated. There's a certain limitation to what we can and what we cannot say. And I suppose that comes from the system that each of us, I, I don't know that you can open the minds of the system that actually currently exists. I feel hugely guilty. I've held those babies that I have vaccinated. I have, I have always tried to compromise myself. There are limitations. I hold my hand up and say I have held the helpless things, I have given those injections, etc. as part of my and I'm just I suppose I'm very, very cognizant of the incompatibility of being a professional working within such a tight code of professional ethics and how this marries to having an open mind. And I put my life on the line, or my job on the line, on occasions, um, making conscientious objections. It doesn't go down well. Um, perhaps the career I'm in isn't always compatible with, I suppose, having an open mind. 
Well, I'm glad you said that because it's something to keep in mind. And it happens to people that are in a career that goes against what we talk about, like the health profession. And when they actually realise that they're actually being paid, that the system is not what, what they thought it was, they thought they were helping the parents and the babies and everything else. And they, oh. they thought it was they were helping the, ba the, the, the babies and the parents and the mothers and everything else. And they realised that actually, the vaccines are dangerous, or whatever the situation is. Sometimes that gets to you, and it can affect people who are in the profession. And they feel, why was I calm? Why, why how did I not see this? You know, it's just a perception. So it never, don't take it personally. We've all woke up at different times, and we all say, how come I didn't see this? It's just the way it is. You know, so never take it personally. Is your radio show, is that the National Airways? Or oh, I'd love it to be on the National Airways. They wouldn't have us on the National Airways, to be too honest. But you can, you can get it, um, uh, you can go to oimradio.com on the internet, and uh, you can download the podcast as well. We know there's a lot of people download the podcast. You might go running or train and listen to the podcast um, while they're doing that. Or we could have the other radio. But uh, no, they wouldn't let anything like what we talk about. And, all the all the speakers here, they wouldn't have it because they don't control. Um, <laughs> and it's a pity, but we, we you know hopefully we will get there. Things are changing. That's the positive message. Things are changing in a very big way, and um, unbelievably more so and faster than you think. So all you need to do, all your job is, is to wake people up, give them the information. Maybe use the field belief system because if you try everything else, it doesn't work. Why not? See how you can Any other questions? One more question. Okay, one more question. One, one yeah. more question. Yeah. <coughs> I agree with you when you say there's um, no facts and opinions. Yeah. But the way I look at it is that behind the opinion there may be some strong feelings there. Yeah. And in those strong feelings it will be true. So. <coughs> The problem with saying it's facts and it's, and it's opinions is that you can aggravate facts as well. It depends where you get the information from. So it's a, I, I see a problem in people who think, yes, yeah, it's facts, and then straight away you close down the dialogue. Yeah, 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 that's about, yeah. <coughs> Okay, this is why you ask questions and you don't go in and start saying, well, that's your opinion, but here's my opinion, and here's the facts, and else. that's why you ask questions. Because there could be something behind it that's real, honestly, you have an experience, and you don't want to go in with like one trying to show. Find out, maybe find out why they have that opinion, where did they get it from, how do they feel about it before you go in. Because there could be something sensitive behind it that you don't want to upset. Them. So, you know, again, ask questions. Be an adult and not a teenager, and, um, and, and just ask the questions. But again, thanks, we have to go. Thanks for everyone.